Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze and determine whether Brazilian midfielder Artur Melo can significantly improve Arsenal's midfield. So in today's video, first we'll focus on Artur's role at Juventus, then we'll shift to what he offers Arsenal, and then lastly we'll focus on where he would fit into Arsenal's midfield. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, initially we could see Juventus operating in a 4-3-3 with Artur in a single pivot position. When you break down how Juventus are looking to operate from an attacking standpoint, you have Morata occupying the center backs, Chiesa and Bernadeschi looking to run at the full backs as wide forwards. You could have Benton Kerr and Rabio taking turns pushing into the final third beyond their markers. And then you have Artur protecting the center backs and looking to shift laterally to cover space in case the full backs do look to push forward. If you were to list off some of Artur's weaknesses off the top of your head, one would be his diminutive frame and his lack of physicality to protect the back four or his ability to shift over to cover space if Juventus were caught in transition. However, Juventus are well drilled and well coached and what you end up seeing is that out in those areas, Artur is able to drop off deeper to help Juventus dictate the tempo of the game and bypass the initial phase of pressure that the opposition side is looking to present. He could drop off in between the center backs to create a back three and allow the full backs to push forward, or you'll shift over into the inside left and inside right position, away from pressure from the front two to get on the ball. Against Verona, you could see that Juventus have switched the play out towards their right back and focus on Artur's positioning as he's not being closed down and drifting away laterally from his marker. As that play develops, you could see Artur's drifting laterally towards his right, and with no pressure being applied towards Artur or the player on the ball, he's able to slide the ball across both Verona players to find Artur in a pocket of space. Artur does well to allow the ball to roll across his body, and now you have the defensive midfielder looking to shift across to apply pressure, and Artur has two passing options ahead of him. And once that pressure from behind is applied and the defensive midfielder is looking to step forward, he slides the ball into the path of Morata, and that helps Juventus bypass the press. Here you see high pressure being applied towards Juventus with McKenney on the ball, and the passing plane towards Artur being blocked out by the front two. What Artur does well here is that he makes a vertical run forward into space between the two opposing players, and that creates a passing avenue for McKenney to bypass the two players to find Artur in this pocket of space in his own third, and that results in him carrying the ball forward to progress Juventus' attack. One of the keys to Artur's game is that when he drops off in towards his own third, he does invite pressure towards him, and he is press resistant, so he has the knack to evade that pressure, and at times, although he does force force himself into odd positions where he can lose the ball, his confidence in his ability to evade that pressure often is successful, and that helps Juventus bypass the initial phase of pressure from the opposition. Here we see Artur picking up a loose ball in the midfield zone, and that attracts Malmo pressure. What happens next is that as Artur anticipates that pressure, he's closed down by two Malmo players, but he's able to take a first touch onto his right foot to evade that pressure. As that play develops, you could see that Artur regains the ball from a loose pass and that's where the initial pressure steps in from behind. Artur does well again to evade that pressure by dribbling forward and holding him off and now you can see that he's looking to run towards the Malmo penalty area and that should force the center back to step forward. However the pressure on Artur continues and that midfielder from behind ends up stepping in once again and this should set Artur free as he evades the pressure to run at the center back but that initial Malmo pressure results in a foul. In this example, you see Artur receiving a rollout from the goalkeeper, and instant pressure being applied to him from behind. Artur doesn't look like he's aware of that pressure, but he looks over his shoulder, and once that pressure is applied, here he does look like he's in danger. But he does well of shielding the ball with his body, and you can see that he's looking to carry the ball towards the right-hand side. He does that well and he evades the pressure, and you can see that he has three options ahead of him in Quadrado, Bernadeschi, and Bentancur. What he does well here is that he identifies that Quadrado is running off his marker in towards a central position, whereas Bernadeschi and Bentancur are marked out of the game. So Artur simply slides the ball across the player that should be tracking Quadrado's movement, and that allows Juve to bypass that initial press to carry the ball forward, as Quadrado is now in a 2v1 with Benton Kerr's marker, and it simply allows him to play a first-time pass into Benton Kerr, as Quadrado receiving the ball pulls away his initial marker. That ultimately also highlights that he's willing to get on the ball in various areas across the pitch, 
and helping Juventus bypass that pressure, but also progress the play with his ball carrying skills and his short range of passing. In this example, we witness Artur dropping into his own half into a pocket of space and he's looking to pick up the ball from the center back. And when he does receive that ball, he should be being swarmed by the two Malmo players. However, what ends up happening is that neither of them step and it allows Artur to sh look over his shoulder and he could see that there's space ahead of him as the Malmo midfielders ahead of Bentancur. And that's where he's now able to carry the ball freely. And because there's no Malmo players around him within close proximity, there's enough space for him to carry the ball from that position in towards the Malmo half. And from there, he has Dybala free towards his left. And that allows him to progress the play and slide the ball out to the attacking midfielder. Against Zenit, Artur receives the ball from the center backs in the halfway circle, and it's in between two Zenit players who you're expecting to shift laterally to apply pressure. However, they allow Artur the time to receive the ball and turn to carry it forward, and by then, now they're too late to apply a tackle, and it allows Artur the space to step forward as the midfielders don't approach him. Artur carries the ball towards the final third, and because those midfielders are retreating, he's able to bypass both and slide the ball into the path of Morata, who's backing in towards the center back, and it places him in a position where he could take his first touch across the initial tackle, and it creates a shooting avenue for him rather than passing the ball back to Artur, but unfortunately for Juventus, he skies his effort over the net. When Artur gets on the ball, he rarely concedes possession, and he looks to shift the ball out into the wider areas, whether it be to his fullbacks or out towards the wider players to try and get them into 1v1 positions. While he rarely gets himself into the final third unless Juventus are completely dominating the opposition, he is capable of playing passes in behind or in towards the final third to get teammates into legitimate goal scoring positions. But for the most part, what we witness from Artur is that he's consistently looking to break lines and play forward vertical passes in towards his midfield shuttlers or simply in towards the front line by taking away two players out of the game to get his teammates into ideal positions in the final third. Essentially if UV are facing a side that's dropping off into two banks of four or playing with a midfield three, you're either having one of the two center forwards looking to step towards him, both occupying space on the outside of him, or one sticking towards him while the other player looks to close down the center backs. But in those situations, Artur is able to drop off deeper ahead of them to get on the ball, drop in between the center backs, or shift out into the inside left or right position to evade the pressure that he would receive when he gets onto the ball. And that's how he forces markers towards him and looks to bypass them with quick passes in towards his teammates. So in terms of the key strengths to his game, it's dropping off deeper to get on the ball, being a reliable passer in terms of playing short passes out into the wider areas, or looking to break lines to get his teammates on the ball between the lines, but also being press resistant in the case where teams do look to close him down tightly, he's able to hold on to the ball, retain it, and ensure that Juve don't concede it in their own third. But he's also capable of progressing the play by getting on the ball in deeper positions, carrying it forward, and then sliding it out to one of the key attackers. With that being said, he could play in various roles in that midfield zone, but he often does operate in his own third or the middle third to get on the ball. If Juve aren't playing in a 4-3-3, they could shift to a 4-2-3-1 with Dybala playing as the number 10. Or even at times you could see them playing in a 4-4-2 with Morata and Moise Keane up front and Artur partnering Benton Kerr or Locatelli in that midfield zone. And at times we witness Rabio playing from the left and looking to shift in centrally to create space for Alexandro to push forward. In those situations, Juve are disciplined without the ball, so he often isn't covering ample space to cover for his teammates, but he is capable of shifting out to those wider areas to cover for the fullbacks, and on a few occasions throughout his Juventus tenure, you've witnessed Artur shifting over into those zones to help Juventus break up play and halt the opposition's attack. Here you see Delit being taken out of position because he's covering for Alexandro, and that's where you see Artur shifting across to provide cover. Artur does well to shift over because it allows Delit to get back into position, and it ensures that Juve are covered in that zone. Although Artur is beaten initially as the player looks to cut central, while he does look to cut back out into the wider area to deliver a cross onto his right foot, 
Artur does well to stick with the play, and you can see that now Delit is back into position, and Alexandro is there for cover. However, Artur doesn't need that help as he does follow the ball, and he creates the 1v2 with Alexandro, and from there you can see McKelney and Delit prepare to shift over if they're bypassed, but from there Artur is able to put a foot in to halt the attack. Here you can see Artur doing a very good job of shifting laterally to apply pressure to the Roma midfielder to cover for Decilio, and you can see that the Chilio is tracking back to provide cover. What Artur does well here is that he ensures that the Roma midfielder doesn't push forward and he forces him backwards. And that's where you can see that the Chilio is now placed in a position where it can be a 1v2. What the Roma midfielder tries to do here is that he picks out Mkhitaryan making a run off Locatelli in towards the final third. But the Chilio and Artur do a very good job of cutting out that pass attempt. And the ball then floats upwards and Artur does a very good job of brushing off the Roma player and ensuring that the ball stays in play. And what's important here is that he's able to retain possession by keeping it in at the touchline ahead of Jose Mourinho. And he's able to recover the ball on the touchline to ensure that Juventus is able to regain possession while also halting the Roma attack. So when we break down how our Termelo would fit in at Arsenal, he wouldn't be required to have an impact in the final third as Arsenal's front four is set for the time being. Yes, they are looking for a center forward, but Lacazette has done a good job in that center forward role. And then in the positions behind him, you have Saka who's coming off the right, Martinelli off the left. They could turn to Smith Rowe who does look to drop in deeper to create space for Tierney. And then they have Odegaard playing in the number 10 role and Smith Rowe can operate in that role as well. Essentially what Arsenal need in that central midfield area is a player that could dictate the tempo of the game and help Arsenal progress play from the middle third to the final third. This ensures that Arsenal wide players don't have to drop deeper into the midfield zone to get on the ball and as stated previously that was Artur's role at Juventus as he was consistently shifting the ball out out into the wider areas to get Bernadeschi, Quadrado and Alexandro on the ball in advanced positions. Similar to the role that we witnessed Xhaka playing for Arsenal is capable of dropping off into the inside left or inside right area to get on the ball and we're aware that Arteta wants his side to play out of the back and pull teams towards him to bypass their pressure to get into advanced positions. In many ways Artur could drop off into his own third to get on the ball as well and it ensures that Arsenal aren't solely reliant on the center backs to play out of the back when the midfield is pressed out of the game. Unlike Xhaka, Lukanga, or Thomas Partey, Artur's a more reliable presence in that midfield zone to evade pressure and a more reliable passing outlet to get on the ball if sides are looking to press Arsenal higher up the pitch. There often is a lack of vertical play from that midfield zone if Thomas Partey or Xhaka aren't playing those passes in towards the final third, so Artur does offer Arsenal that in a midfield role. And while many will question his physical presence in that midfield area in the Premier League, he is press resistant, so his ability to hold off pressure and evade it, it will be essential for Arsenal, whether it be Arsenal's own third or in their middle third. And even in games where Arsenal are dominating possession with the side dropping off to two deep banks of four, he's capable of having an impact in the final third if required. What you do witness here is that his passing range and his ability to locate the movement of his teammates allows the front line to drop off into attacking positions in the final third or shift laterally into those zones and pockets of space to serve as a passing outlet for him. And that's how he's able to take out the opposing side's players by splitting them or playing balls over the top and towards his teammates to place them into advanced positions. So in many cases, if Arsenal want to stick with their 4-2-3-1, he could slot into that midfield role alongside Xhaka or Thomas Partey. And he does ensure that Arsenal have cover for Thomas Partey, who has failed to remain fit throughout his Arsenal tenure. Artur could operate as a single pivot if required, but also shift out into the shuttler roles with either Thomas Partey or Xhaka playing as a single pivot. And if he does play a bit higher up the pitch, now he could shift out into the inside right or left position to help Arsenal progress their play out in the wider areas. Whether it be playing balls towards Tierney and Martinelli and creating triangles on the left-hand side, or shifting out to the right-hand side to form passing combinations with Tomiyasu and Saka, or simply making forward runs into that zone to free up space for Saka to get into 1v1s against the opposing side's fullback. So as you can see, in many ways, Artur Melo could significantly improve Arsenal's ability to dominate the midfield zone through ball retention, his press resistance, and his willingness to vary his passing range whilst consistently breaking lines.